The discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls ranks as one of the most pivotal archaeological achievements of the 20th century, fundamentally transforming our comprehension of history, the evolution of the Hebrew Bible, and the origins of Christianity. Unearthed in a collection of caves near the Dead Sea at Qumran, these ancient manuscripts provide a precious an unparalleled glimpse into the religious, cultural, and historical context of the Second Temple period. Spanning from 516 BCE to 70 CE, in 1947, a Bedouin shepherd named Muhammad Edib stumbled upon what would become a world-altering discovery concerning Jewish history, the development of the Hebrew Bible, and the nascent phases of Christianity. While searching for a lost sheep near the Dead Sea, he found a collection of ancient scrolls concealed in jars within a cave. This serendipitous find at Qumran ignited a flurry of archaeological exploration, leading to the retrieval of scrolls and fragments from a total of 11 caves, dating from the 3rd century BCE to the 1st century CE. The Dead Sea Scrolls encompass a remarkable array of religious texts, not limited to biblical manuscripts. The collection includes apocryphal and pseudepigraphal writings, sectarian manuscripts describing the Qumran community's life and beliefs, and other texts of both religious and secular content. Notably, the collection contains complete or partial texts of every book of the Hebrew Bible, with the exception of the Book of Esther, marking them as significantly older than any other Hebrew manuscripts by about a thousand years. These texts provide invaluable insights into the textual history and evolution of the Hebrew Bible. The importance of these ancient manuscripts extends well beyond their antiquity and rarity. They shed light on the process of canonization and the transmission of biblical texts, highlighting variations and evolution over time. Additionally, the non-biblical texts among the scrolls offer a rare look into the beliefs, practices, and daily life of what many scholars believe to be the Essenes, a Jewish sect that lived in a monastic community at Qumran. Descriptions of this community, characterized by stringent rules, communal living, and a focus on ritual purity, align with historical descriptions by ancient historians like Josephus and Pliny the Elder, supporting the hypothesis of an Essene link. Fascinating aspects of the Dead Sea Scrolls include their role as a potential library of the Qumran community, reflecting the diverse spectrum of Jewish fought during the Second Temple period. The preservation methods, facilitated by the arid climate of the Dead Sea region, and the practice of storing scrolls in jars, have enabled these texts to endure for over two millennia. Furthermore, technological advancements have facilitated the digitization of the scrolls, making them accessible to a worldwide audience, and aiding in their study and preservation. When comparing the Dead Sea Scrolls with other significant ancient religious texts, such as the Nag Hammadi Library, the differences in their contributions to our understanding of ancient religious thought become evident. While the Nag Hammadi texts shed light on early Christian Gnosticism, featuring a variety of Gospels and spiritual writings not present in the canonical Bible, the Dead Sea Scrolls primarily illuminate the Jewish context of the Second Temple period. Together, these findings underscore the rich diversity and textual intricacy of religious thought in the ancient Near East, offering both scholars and the general public a more profound insight into the origins and evolution of these two major world religions. In 1945, near the upper Egyptian town of Nag Hammadi, a remarkable discovery was made. 
That would significantly alter our comprehension of early Christianity. A local farmer, Muhammad Ali al saman was digging for fertilizer. When he came across a sealed earthenware jar, initially apprehensive, fearing it might contain a jinn, his curiosity eventually led him to discover a collection of leather-bound papyrus codices. This collection, now known as the Nag Hammadi Library, contained 13 ancient books, comprising over 50 texts, including gospels such as those of Thomas and Philip, Acts, letters, and theological treatises, excluded from the canonical New Testament. The uncovering of the Nag Hammadi Library was revolutionary for several reasons. Primarily, the texts provided a comprehensive glimpse into Gnosticism, an early Christian movement that prized direct knowledge of the divine as the route to salvation. Prior to this discovery, our knowledge of Gnosticism was largely derived from its detractors. However, the Nag Hammadi texts offered a first-hand view of the diverse spectrum of thought within early Christianity, challenging the previously held belief of a homogenous set of doctrines and practices among its followers. These manuscripts were exceptionally well-preserved, likely due to the dry, sealed jar in which they had been stored for centuries. Written in Coptic, the final stage of the Egyptian language, these texts were translations from earlier Greek writings. The translation of these documents into contemporary languages has transformed the study of early Christian history, rendering them accessible to both academics and the general public. The Nag Hammadi texts explore spiritual and philosophical themes, not prominently featured in the canonical Bible, offering a more mystical and metaphysical perspective on Jesus and his teachings. They address the origin of evil, the nature of God, and the soul's journey, providing a distinctive viewpoint on early Christian theology. One particularly fascinating aspect of the Nag Hammadi Library is its depiction of Mary Magdalene. In texts such as the Gospel of Philip, Mary is portrayed as a close companion of Jesus, sparking debates about her role in early Christian communities and challenging traditional views of women's status in the early church. This portrayal contrasts with her more limited role in the canonical Gospels and has stimulated discussions on gender and leadership within early Christianity. Comparing the Nag Hammadi Library with the Dead Sea Scrolls reveals two vastly different snapshots of religious thought in the ancient world. Together, these discoveries have significantly broadened our understanding of ancient religious thought, underscoring the complex and diverse beliefs that existed during their respective periods and illustrating the evolving religious landscape from Judaism to Christianity. In the mid-19th century, an extraordinary discovery at St. Catherine's Monastery on the Sinai Peninsula left an indelible mark on biblical scholarship and the history of Christianity. Constantine von Tischendorf, a German biblical scholar, during his visit to the monastery, discovered several leaves of an ancient manuscript in a basket of old parchments destined for destruction. This manuscript, known as the Codex Sinaiticus, dates back to the 4th century AD and is one of the oldest and most complete versions of the Christian Bible. Written in Greek, the Codex Sinaiticus is remarkable for several reasons. It includes the complete New Testament, a significant portion of the Old Testament, the Septuagint a Greek translation of Hebrew scriptures, and the Apocrypha. This makes it one of the few manuscripts offering such a comprehensive view of early Christian biblical literature. Additionally, it contains texts like the Epistle of Barnabas, 
and the shepherd of Hermas, which are absent from the canonical Bible of most Christian traditions today. The significance of the Codex Sinaiticus extends well beyond its contents. It serves as a critical resource for textual criticism, allowing scholars to compare its texts with those of other ancient manuscripts to deduce the most likely original texts of the Christian Bible. This insight into the diversity of beliefs and practices within early Christian communities is invaluable, offering a clearer picture of the early church's efforts to standardize Christian texts. Fascinating facts about the production and preservation of the Codex Sinaiticus include its likely production in one of the major Christian centers, possibly Alexandria, and its format as an early Christian codex, which predates the modern book format. The manuscript has been preserved and digitized, with portions held in four separate locations, the British Library in London, the University Library in Leipzig, the National Library of Russia in St. Petersburg, and St. Catherine's Monastery itself. This digitization effort has made the Codex Sinaiticus accessible to a worldwide audience, ensuring its preservation and ongoing study. An interesting theory concerning the Codex Sinaiticus involves Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. In 331 AD, Constantine tasked Eusebius of Caesarea with producing 50 copies of the scriptures for the churches of Constantinople. Some scholars speculate that the Codex Sinaiticus might have been one of these copies, given its early date and the high quality of its production. Although there is no direct evidence to support this theory, it adds an intriguing dimension to the Codex's history, especially when compared to the Codex Vaticanus. The Codex Vaticanus, another significant ancient biblical manuscript from the 4th century, alongside the Codex Sinaiticus, contributes uniquely to our understanding of the Christian biblical canon. While the Codex Vaticanus is slightly older, and exhibits some textual differences. The Codex Sinaiticus is more comprehensive, including books not found in the Vaticanus. Together, these manuscripts are pivotal for grasping the development and transmission of the Christian biblical canon, offering essential insights into the text of the Christian Bible during its formative period. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, Click on the super thanks button below.